Hello and welcome to the Aid Station. I'm Chris Robb and today I really am so excited to be traveling to Singapore to meet one of the most inspirational people I know. Her name is Masami Saito. She is the founder of an incredible organization called B1G1. Hi Masami, great to see you. Hi Chris, great to um, see you too. Thank you for having me here. No, it's a pleasure. It's, uh, it's really wonderful. I know that uh, what we're going to talk about in the next 15 minutes is going to inspire many people and uh, maybe start. I, I can't begin to tell your incredible story. So I'd love if we can to start with you telling us a little bit about the Masami Saito and the, and the B1G1 story, please. <laughs> so um, I'm the founder of B1G1 and B1G1 also stands for buy one, give one. So um, if you imagine a world where everything we do makes a difference. So for example, um, let's say, imagine an accountant who gives access to education to a child for every client they create, or an author planting a book for every book she sells, or a coffee shop um, giving access to life-saving water for every coffee they sell. So B1J1 helps businesses embed effective giving in what they do, so that as a result of it, they can create a positive impact in the world um, just by uh, being in business. So that's B1G1. And B1G1 started in 2007. So it's nearly 13 years since the beginning. And today, B1G1 works with thousands of um, inspiring companies. And many of them are running small to medium sized businesses. And but those businesses have created more than 207 million um, giving impact um, working together. So uh, that's B1G1 in a nutshell. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really uh, grateful for the amazing businesses who choose to do something like giving and make it the part of what they do because together by making giving habit rather than just an ad hoc thing, um, I believe that the businesses with a real sense of purpose can really transform the world. It's, it's an absolutely wonderful vision. And, and so you're, you're originally from Japan, but you've now lived in yes. Singapore for, 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 mm -hmm. for many years and you've been, been around the world. What, what's life for you like in, in Singapore at the moment under, under COVID-19? <laughs> Well, um, I'm not sure if you hear what's happening in, in, the, in your news, what's happening in Singapore, um, but Singapore is a great place to be. I'm very lucky um, to be here for the you know, last decade and also raising uh, my kids. So I have a two teenage children in Singapore as well. So um, being part of this nation for the, you know, more than the decade, um, uh, now, um, actually, the way you know things work in Singapore is quite amazing because there is a very strong leadership, and also um, Singapore is as a city nation, you know, is very well organized. So um, even though we are actually facing uh, extremely difficult situations everywhere around the world, but um, we are you know staying at home and working from home, and uh, there is a lot of support from the you know local government. Um, things are quite well maintained and organized. So even though we still have a yet another at least two weeks to be in the lockdown, and from uh, beginning of June, things will gradually, slowly start to open up. Um, but we are actually you know, uh, prepared to, uh, to live with this for quite some time. But anyway, um, I think we are some of the kind of luckier ones that we could still be running um, our ventures uh, remotely and uh, stay connected like this, you know, you Chris, like being in different countries and um, uh, with the work that we do, we are also connected with so many business people and I guess in the last couple of months, we had some extraordinary connections um, with these members around the world as well. So um, I'm actually uh, very grateful um, about this. Mm. And, and you're a, you're a keen runner you've run a number of marathons in fact you you ran um i think the singapore marathon was it last year or the year before with a, a blind friend of yours and you train and how mm. how's that impacted your ability to to get out and run are you allowed to get out and exercise well, um, actually, yes. So even though um, exercise or shopping, you know, those things are allowed, but we are encouraged to also do it um, alone 
or only with a few people from the same household, you know, maximum. So, um, of course, I can't join uh, races or uh, group runs, uh, which I miss. But at the same time, the fact that we could still get out there and then run among the trees. Um, so uh, I'm uh, actually running more probably regularly than mm -hmm. ever before because now I don't have to commute to work. So that means when I wake up, um, I set aside the time to um, do exercise. So um, I uh, have been running every, almost every single day. <laughs> That's wonderful. And such a beautiful city to run in so many park connectors and, and, and gardens and things. And, uh, you know, aside from that freedom, obviously, you, we were talking about some of the challenges. You've got a, a wonderful team that is now working remotely. You mentioned that you have some mm. new members that you've brought on to the team, and then you're, mm. you're helping these many incredible causes all over the world face the, the yeah. challenges that they and many businesses and organizations are, are facing. Can you maybe share a little bit about that with us, please, Masami? Mm. So when this hit us, um, I I think we started to see the real impact I, uh, from end of February, beginning of March. And when that happened, of course, like many of the businesses that we work with had you know, major challenges as well. So we ourselves went to a kind of mode you know, of, oh my gosh, like we have to change the way we do what we do or uh, our business you know, also will be impacted by this. But um, at that time, we actually decided to do something else as well. You know, like all the businesses need to think about the self like protection and uh, uh, preservation as well. But we also wanted to make sure that we as uh, connected with people that we work with um, in a uh, really meaningful way. So we contacted all of the charity organizations that we work with because, you know, when we are doing what we do, we are working with uh, businesses uh, to and, and then help them give. But then at the same time, we also work with uh, many charity organizations so that they can execute um, on their activities and create the impacts on the ground. So when we went to the mode of, let's see, you know, how all the charity organizations and the people who work for those organizations are doing. So we reached out to them, um, every single one of them, and then asked them how things were going. And as a result, we started to discover some um, incredible things. So one example is like uh, this organization um, in Kenya, which helps women uh, uh, create the income by learning sewing skills. So they've had this activity um, for so many years, but then when this pandemic uh, started to hit their community, you know, affect their community, what they did was to actually start producing um, reusable masks for the local communities. So they um, send us some photos of women actually practicing um, social distancing while producing those um, colorful, beautiful masks. Um, and they were saying that they want to distribute the masks to every person in the community, including health workers, um, community workers, but also all the children and elderly. And so we thought, oh, that's fantastic. So we um, also let the, the you know, members, businesses that we work with as well saying, hey, here's this opportunity as well. And it's a very difficult time. And, you know, we didn't feel comfortable to push the giving aspect and say, you know, you should still keep giving. But when we made this opportunity available, um, many businesses actually resonated with that and supported the project like this. And as a result, in the last, like, let's say, four to six weeks, already more than um, enough funds uh, was raised to give 2,000 masks. And um, just yesterday, this organization went to deliver um, 1,000 masks to the to the members of the community, and they're gonna keep doing this. So, um, even though uh, you know it's it's not the easy time, but if we find the ways where we could do small things, then that could actually give us encouragement that you know we can still make a difference for somebody else as well. And uh, if we think about all of the people you know working in health and the medical industries, um, health workers, uh, transportation, you know drivers of um, transportation. And so we feel really grateful and lucky to be able to do what we do and, uh, you know, have the life we have as well. So I guess like um, tuning into what was happening in the community in that way uh, gave us additional encouragement. And uh, now the team has a uh, time to, you know, focus on other things that they usually cannot focus on because they were they are so busy um, in a normal time. So they've got uh, some really great 
create a project to, to really transform the you know user experience um, and the systems, the processes, and so on. So um, I'm looking forward to um, taking those learning as well as the work that we are doing now, and then see how like moving forward we can create the even greater positive impact. So. Yeah, so wow. we're doing whatever we can. <laughs> That's amazing. And, you know, it's, it's one of the things that I, I so love about B1G1. And, 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 you know, when I share the story with other people, it's the fact that you don't deal in dollars, you deal in impacts. And, and, it, and you know, it's, mm. it, it's so inspiring to see the impacts that get created. Someone getting the gift of sight, someone getting water, someone getting a mm. mask. And, you know, already in this short conversation, you've used the word gratitude at least three times, I think. And, and, and it's so reflective mm. of you that whatever situation you're in, you you're always grateful for what you have and it transcends through your organization. That's something that, that's quite incredible. And, and from there, I wanted to maybe move on to, to leadership because I see you as an incredible leader in your community and the organization. But what, what, what lessons have you had over the years from a leadership perspective? Who do you look up from a leadership and what leadership tips might you, you have to share in the few minutes that we have with, with people that are listening to this, Masami? I think um, this current pandemic, you know, the, the situation we are all in is an interesting time because what was already happening somehow magnifies during this period. So when we look around and then see what kind of leadership um, is creating what kind of results, we also notice that there are different styles of leadership um, everywhere. And then um, certain type of leadership might actually resonate better with the people in the group group because leaders are needed in you know leading the groups so if uh, leadership is not just about the saying this is what we should do you know and this is what you have to do or follow and here's the regulation that's not the leadership but the leadership creates a direction where members of community will actually come together to um, create the change that they can be part of and they want to be part of. So um, we have already seen some extraordinary leadership and how that impacted you know, things um, in their own community, but also that inspired other um, communities around the world to move to. So I guess like uh, it's difficult to name you know, one person as somebody I look up to because I actually take you know, lots of learning and examples and lessons from many great leaders that I, I, I see and observe. And sometimes these people might not be famous. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it could be somebody on the ground seeing like, oh, here's this challenge and I'm going to do something about it, even though I may not be able to change uh, everything, but I will make a change in this space. And then uh, when somebody takes that kind of action with that aspiration and a few other people start to follow, then I think that is a great leadership that we can actually learn from as well. Mm, so I think uh, for, you know, so far, I've already um, seen many great examples of that, you know, leadership. And then I'm sure you have as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful. And so, you know, sometimes we, we, we think of leadership having to come from presidents and prime ministers and CEOs, but the, the reality is it comes, starts in communities, it starts in homes and, mm. uh, and, and, and schools and, and, and so many other areas of grassroots, if you want to call it that. Yeah. That's, that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, perspective on it. Thank you. As always, I love to finish on, on, on a, a high and inspiring note. I'm sure you've seen so many, I know you've seen so many incredible, inspirational stories in through your your time with b1g1 but is there something that maybe you'd like to leave the audience with that, uh, that that's inspired you whether it be in these times or it's something that you've seen in in previous times that mm. that, that will would inspire people um for me i think the important message um that always encouraged me was the power of small and I didn't see it before, like in the beginning of my own entrepreneurship journey. But what happened um, in the uh, birth of B1J1 idea was this, like as a you know, business owner, I had a, a dream and aspiration. I wanted to make a difference and uh, I wanted to do something about the street kids. Uh, uh, um, I saw when I visited those countries um, in my youth, um, backpacking around the world. So, um, so that's why I started my own business trying to make a difference. But then on a day-to-day -day basis, I felt small. You know, the 
um, problems around the world seems to be so big that no matter how hard I was trying, I could not make a difference. Or on the day-to-day -day business life, um, I was so busy and I didn't have enough time or uh, our business wasn't making much profit. And as a result, we didn't have much to give. Or So all those things discouraged me. And then as a result, I actually didn't do much. You know, like I thought, well, like I need to become successful first so that one day we could do big things. One day I could build a soup kitchen and you know, feed and educate a lot of children. So, um, um, but then the idea of B1J1 came to me when I realized that instead of trying to do something big in the future, what if our company just gave one meal for every meal we sold? And then I realized that um, uh, at that time, that it, you know, it was affordable, we could do it if you were only thinking about giving one meal for every product. <laughs> so that thinking transformed um, what I was doing then, but then that led to the formation of B1J1 as the global giving initiative. And I then sold my company then and moved to Singapore. And since then, we've worked with so many amazing businesses and looking back, and you know really seeing like okay 207 million giving impacts created by these businesses and that's actually astonishing but at the same time it only happened because we recognized that um in the power of small and so um you know when we are in pandemic like this we feel also small you know we we didn't cause this <laughs> like personally so and we cannot change it um individually either like one company or one person cannot change what's happening in the world and so it's easy to get the powerless and uh, you know feel small um, but at the same time when we recognize that maybe just the shifting from trying to do something big and as a result of the big thing, we can change the world too. Actually recognizing maybe the small thing we can do today. And by coming together, we could actually make a big, much bigger impact. So um, that's kind of my uh, main message that I get encouraged by myself. So I hope that um, you, you know, um, watching this uh, video, uh, will also start to see more of the gift that you have and what you could be doing to um, help create a great impact in whatever way you are um, already doing. So thank you for tuning in. <laughs> That's wonderful. <clears throat> Excuse me. What a, what a great way to end the, the incredible power of small. And, you know, there's no better example than 207 million impacts of little small micro impacts and some of them bigger than others. But mm -hmm. uh, wonderful, Masami. As always, uh, Masami Saito, such a joy to see you and hear uh, your incredible inspirational attitude. Thank you so much for making the time and look forward to seeing you soon in Singapore. Thanks so much. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris.